Uh, my name is Joe Brennan and I'm Director of Studies and a teacher in Waterford English Language Centres. Fantastic. Um, so just to kick off, uh, Joe, the first question is, what challenges has the pandemic posed in your school or in your classroom? Um, well, I suppose they're changing all the time, but they're ever evolving challenges. But to go back, I suppose, to the very beginning when um, from March, when everything closed down, um, initially we found like our, our issue was, I suppose, a lack of knowing what was happening next and what to do. Um, so we, we kind of tried to deal with what was immediately in front of us. And uh, essentially, the first few weeks, obviously, it was supporting the learners that we had here. Um, the, the initial week was dealing with really sending people home and getting people home and dealing with various requests for deferrals and refunds, etc. Um, but once we got everybody who wanted to go home home, and uh, especially um, I'm thinking of junior students, um, we um, really looked at the, our, the adult student cohort that were left here, and there weren't many of them but it was very time consuming because suddenly we were dealing with the whole learner experience. Like, it, like I, I would live in a classroom if I had a choice, that's my little bubble, my safe space. And, uh, but outside that, there's so many things that impact on, on students' uh, learning experience in Ireland and, and it, it just brought them all to the fore. So like people were losing jobs, people like problems with rent and accommodation, didn't know how to get home, worries about family. And it just suddenly, there was a, a holistic, student that needed support and um there was a lot of stuff that we really had no control over and and couldn't do very much about but we did make ourselves available to listen and try and be supportive in that way um as um initially as well we we very early made the decision to try and stay in contact with the students as much as possible um, even when we weren't quite sure how we were going to do that, but we worked through it. Um, WhatsApp was like for the initial couple of days when everything was up in the air. Um, but we did, the day after we were asked closed on March the 13th, I think we, we did just make contact with all the students and try and put together a, an element of a study plan so that they would be working for the first couple of weeks until we decided what we were going to put in place. Um, as the time went on then, um, it was clear this wasn't going to be a short term thing and um, we really had to look at, right, we, we have these students to whom we have promised a course and the delivery of that course now has to be completely different because we can't deliver it in the way it was promised. Um, so we um, we went on Zoom and, and um, thankfully we already had a learning management system in place, which was a godsend. So a lot of our materials were up there already. Um, and they were, um, even more importantly, the students were used to using it because trying, like it just trying to get students to use technology by teaching them how to use it using technology is just an added layer of, of complication. Um, so we were very lucky in that regard. Um, and most of the students engaged very well. I mean, it was a huge learning curve for everybody. Um, and obviously so many things were going on outside the classroom that sort of the classroom was, what was happening inside the classroom was not so important for some of the students. Um, but gradually, like we, we didn't start off and go back in 15 hours. We started with a couple of hours a week and then kind of it went to 10 hours a week, I think online. And then um, I think it, it was nearly, it was the end of April before we kind of got back to full 15 hours delivery online. Um, so that was one element. So there was the students, but then of course it was all the staff that we need to support the students and, and they're all going through the unknown, uh, uh, the unknown as well and what's happening next. And normally before the pandemic, we usually only communicated information when we had information to communicate. And I think during the pandemic, it was really important that we just communicated that we like, we kept in regular contact and said, we don't know what's happening next. We, we really, this is what we're doing now. This is what we hope to do. But in terms of when are we all going to be sitting down together in the staff room or in the classroom, we just have no answers for that. And we became kind of used to that communicating ambiguity and um, just the feedback from staff and teachers just to have even a weekly newsletter or just a check-in was um, hugely positive. And, and I mean, it was really important for us as well just to connect and um, we also started very early on there was a huge craze for pub quizzes uh, that kind of petered out very suddenly as well but um, 
So we got on that bandwagon and we kind of had, um, we did a whole school pub quiz about once every two weeks. And like some people were there, some people weren't, but it was just great to see everybody in, in, a, in a casual, very feistily competitive atmosphere, but um, uh, it, it was an important part of, of connecting with everybody and make, just make sure everybody was okay. Um, and I think the third major challenge right from the very beginning, and I don't think it's really been sorted out just yet, is, is really a, a lack of clarity and direction from regulatory, regulatory bodies. And people, students and staff, and people who are inquiring about the future asking questions that we just can't seem to get the answer to and it's it's very frustrating and it makes it very difficult for planning as we go forward um in terms of the classroom situation then that was a whole different challenge and um i suppose just from a personal perspective and from the kind of philosophy we have teaching in the school where connection is so important we're a very small school um and we try and really make provide an environment where students feel safe and they, they feel comfortable making mistakes and um it's a very um welcoming environment and to sort of lose that connection because zoom is fantastic but at the best of times everybody's in their own individual bubble and each individual bubble is connected to the other bubbles whereas in a classroom everybody's in the same bubble and there's sort of cross-pollination of ideas and um possibly the most important thing is more than one person can speak at a time. So um, the, the issue with Zoom is that as soon as one person speaks, it cuts everybody else off, even though it's very, very quick and very clever. But um, so we missed that. We missed that connection. Now we were very lucky in a certain way that a lot of the students who remained with us throughout the pandemic had met their teachers beforehand. And so the rapport was already built up. But I do think that in terms of going forward when we are continuing to use technology as inevitably we will um that time more time needs to be dedicated to rapport building and helping students feel that the classroom is their classroom and that that it's their space to learn in and um i think that takes longer um online um obviously second issue it was just the technology getting used to using the technology well, first of all, learning how to use the technology and, and like fantastic, like very quick off the mark um, organizations like Equals and Nile, they had online courses that we could access and, and learn what other people were doing. And I think everybody was sort of learning on the hoof. Um, and it was quite an exciting time for an ideas, ideas if they, like from a theoretical standpoint, if we weren't all just running as fast as we could to keep up. But um, so it, it was great to have access to them and to be able to, to share that information and that, that it was freely accessible to, to all the staff and teachers. Um, but then the other side was, of course, the reliability of the technology and, and, and the hardware and the Wi-Fi that students needed to consistently check in. And, and that was always an issue. I remember there was one student who was, who was like kind of coming to lessons on their mobile phone from a like kind of in a corner of a shed of a, some sort of garden center where they were working that was where their job was in, in the wilds of Wexford and that was the only place in the whole area of the garden center that they could get wi-fi so not an ideal learning environment really but um, I think if nothing else I hope this experience has taught us a, a certain degree of patience <laughs> because it would be very easy to lose your mind and, and uh, when you have to repeat things again and again and people drop out and back in. And, and I think also, I think uh, another learning from this is as well is, is, is sort of, the, the, I hope we've learned that it's okay not to know the answers because we beat ourselves up sometimes when things go wrong, especially in the classroom as a teacher. And you kind of go, oh, like you get very frustrated and sometimes it's just not our fault. And, we can't expect to know the answers. We just have to deal with it in the, the, the best way possible. Um, and then as everything has dragged on and as it continues to drag on and as um, the uncertainty remains for the foreseeable future, uh, I mean, motivation and energy is just, it is really, really hard to keep people up and keep people interested and, keep a very positive atmosphere in the classroom from from like a teacher's perspective and from a student's perspective and, and for teachers to go in every day and like kind of some students are logging in their pajamas and 
some people haven't had their coffee yet and people are like some people drop out or just issues with technology but to keep a, a positive learning atmosphere it, it's a huge huge challenge and um and again i think we need to be kind to ourselves as well in that regard in in that that it's okay that some days it doesn't go as well as it might and that not every lesson is going to be perfect um in in terms of like there were a lot of the challenges and ongoing challenges i i I'm not sure, like there are things that we have tried and that we are, that we feel are important and that have, we feel have worked, but it, it's uh, continuing to be a work in progress and we're learning all the time. But I, I really do think to go back to the communication is, is so important and uh, not to sort of silo ourselves in like kind of, okay, we, we, we're not really sure what we're doing. So we're going to ma maintain radio silence until we have a plan. Um, I think, um both for staff motivation but also um for students um across like the whole range of problems there but i think when using technology i think students need a very clear idea of how we're going to communicate when they can expect communication when they will get an answer to communication and um, how they should submit assignments how they should submit um, homework when they can expect to get back and i think all of that should be delivered very consistently and of course, there will always be technical issues, but as far as is possible, that when we say they can expect an answer, they get an answer. And, and because I think especially when dealing with technology, if you tell somebody that you, something's going to happen when they go here and it doesn't happen, then they're less likely to both try that again or to believe you the next time. So it's, it's really important to check all the links work, all everything that we tell them is going to happen when they click on a button happens when they click on a button mm -hmm. um so yeah um i think as well i mean as i said before we're we're very much a learner centered school and we have um i suppose the luxury in in a small school is to be able to be very person focused and to be, be able to give individual attention that that isn't that the situation in many schools i understand that um, due to sheer size but um i think in every conundrum and every challenge we came to where we didn't really know the correct answer we always erred on the side of kindness or the, the what's what's the most immediately positive thing we can do for the student and then worry about the consequences after that and i mean I would normally be considered in work as very fastidious when it comes to the rules of um, regulatory bodies, etc. And uh, if you say you're doing 15 hours a week in the morning, then you're in class 15 hours a week in the morning or you're not getting attendance. But I think there are times when the rules don't work. And if we can facilitate students to engage in their course in whatever fashion is possible, uh, in these times, then it's important to do it in a way that supports the student as a whole person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, can I ask you to show the pictures that you have there, Joe, to just and explain yeah. maybe a little okay. bit of what they what they illustrate um, yes. of, of, of the approach that you took? Okay, well, um, just very early on, I just have a few, few um, slides. Um, very early on, we decided that no one was going to lose any hours, that we were going to teach out all our students, um, whether that be to add hours in, but that the face-to-face -face time would be there. Um, let me just I choose this moment to um, forget how to use Zoom. <laughs> no. Okay, so for example, we had um, an academic year program last year, and um, this is some of the students, and they were all prepared for Cambridge exams. And usually we have a Cambridge exam before they go home. Uh, and um, it's one of the things they really work very hard towards. And of course, they had only six weeks left or seven weeks left um, in when, when the pandemic came. So when they all went home, we put all their uh, lessons online and we continued and, and most of them did the exam. In, they, these were all from Spain um, when, like during the summer, um, quite successfully I might add. Um, some of them preferred the online lessons. And uh, I think that was another interesting thing that never really occurred to me that there are some students who actually shine in an online environment 
who might be quite reserved in a in a in a classroom. So, um, but um, and also with our adult learners as well. As soon as we could get back to um, um, as soon as we could get them on Zoom, they were doing their full time lessons again. Um, and again, with adult learners as well, when like the first thing was that we were going to teach everybody outdoor hours. Uh, the second thing was we want to be back in the classroom. And, and I, I know some people will question, like, why do you want to be back in class? We love being in the classroom. And as soon as, uh, as was possible, we, we, we were, well, we, we planned, and we tried to, we set several dates and they kept getting pushed out and pushed out because, well, things weren't very clear. Um, but the whole time, we, like our aim was to be back into the classroom as soon as possible. So, um, we set up our like um, this is this year's academic year program um, when they arrived in and we kind of went back late in July we started to go back and we we, um, we did it in a graduated fashion we went back for one day we saw how everybody felt did they feel safe what did they were there any suggestions we got feedback were desks far enough apart were there enough sanitizers etc then the following week we went back for two days then we did two days for two weeks and then by sort of the middle of august we were back for we run the, the program over four days in the mornings and um so everybody was back and of course we were just getting used to be back when everything closed down again. um initially i mean it wasn't perfect and uh, there really was especially the first week um with staff as much as students it's strange it's like it to be even on Zoom all the time, you're still isolated socially. And, and to get people, like, it was a little awkward. Like, it was a little awkward to, like, in people walking in and, and it's almost, people have stopped looking at each other in, when you're out in the world now. And um, so it took a day or two. And then um, once we were back, the four days, everybody loved it. It was just, it was fantastic. People, like, we, we, Took on some students from other schools to try and help them out who live quite a distance away from us and and th those students were quite happy to be on zoom but like even all of those like after some initial grumbling they kind of skipped into the classrooms after the second week so we were really really delighted with that um and um and we can't wait to go back and, and someone said to me the other day well what are you going to go back just for three weeks before Christmas? And I said, we will go back if there's one week before Christmas, because I think it's important for everybody, especially at Christmas, to be together and to, and to spend some time with other people. Um, because it is very, very easy to become psychologically and socially isolated. And, and, and that's part of the whole student experience. Um, sometimes I think that this year, no matter what we do in inside the classroom and within the school, it will only obviously be a very small part of how students remember 2020. And, uh, but nonetheless, we need to make it a, a positive part of 2020.